The Art of Negotiation Did you know that every day you're in a negotiation? And the funny thing is, you might not even realize it. All day long you're probably negotiating with yourself on what you should do, what you should eat, what you should wear, how much money to spend, and so on are just a few examples of some negotiations you might not be aware of going on in your mind. When you're typically thinking about a negotiation, the first thought that might come to mind is a man or a woman in a boardroom wearing a suit, shaking hands with another person after a successful negotiation, and then striking a deal. But this isn't always the case. Great negotiations are about great collaborations. Before I go into business-specific negotiation techniques, I would like to introduce the stairway model, which was developed by the FBI for negotiating in hostage situations, where emotions are running high and rational thinking is often obscured. I would recommend that you use this framework when you're faced with a negotiation situation in your own lives, whether it be in your business, career, marital affairs, or even when you plan on making an expensive purchase. I must warn you that this strategy will be counterintuitive to your normal thinking. Most of us, when we enter into any negotiation situation, our ultimate goal is to influence and modify the other person's behavior, thinking, and actions by convincing them that we are right and they are wrong. The blunt truth of the matter is that we can never get someone to see things our way until they first believe that we can see things their way. You see, the problem with the first approach is that the harder you try to convince the other person that they are in the wrong, the more convinced they become that they are right. The key is not to convince them of anything, but instead to start by first understanding their perspective. And this is a technique the FBI uses. The first step in the FBI's five-step hostage strategy is to actively listen. You need to listen to what the other person has got to say, and you need to do this without any bias towards them. The FBI uses a technique called mirroring, in which you repeat some of the key words your counterpart is saying. This is in order to extract more information and understand their perspective better. Let's say you're in a sales situation, where you're pitching a product to a potential client. After you've made your pitch, the client tells you that he doesn't think this will work for them. Using the mirroring technique, you repeat some of the client's keywords back to them. You think this won't work for you. This will prompt them to elaborate on their reply. They could reply and say they meant any of the following things. I like your product, but I don't think it's for me. I'm just not comfortable with your company values or its reputation enough. I don't think I'm smart enough to figure this out. Maybe next time. My boss won't allow me to make this work. My team might not listen to me or think it's a good idea. I don't think your product works, nor is it probably a good fit for us. Now that you have an idea of what your counterpart is really thinking and you can put yourself in their shoes, then you can recalibrate your pitch and address their concerns. But without active listening, you can't do this effectively. If you started pitching and tried to modify his or her behavior without properly understanding the person, or at the very least have them believe that you understand them, you will not be effective in the negotiation. The second step in the FBI's five-step hostage strategy is to develop empathy. True empathy is understanding why someone else feels the way they do, and then connecting with them by sharing those same feelings. A hostage negotiator doesn't have to agree with anything that the person he's trying to negotiate with is telling him. He just needs to understand deeply why that person is saying what he's saying and acting the way he's acting. This is only possible once you have actively listened to what he's got to say. The third step is to respond in kind with words that resonate with the person you're negotiating with. This is in no way manipulation, but if it is seen that way by the other person, then you might have lost the negotiation. In a manner of speaking, you have to develop a form of the Stockholm Syndrome, which is a term used to describe how hostages begin to see, understand, and ultimately adopt the rationale of their captives. The fourth step is to influence. Most often the word implies manipulating someone to do something they do not want to do. Well, that might work in a situation where you have leverage over someone, but it will definitely not work in a hostage situation where the other guy has leverage over you. To influence someone in such a situation means to find a way to problem solve with someone by understanding his perspective. Since you have rapport with the person, the last step in the FBI's five-step strategy is to change behavior. Unfortunately, this last step is where most of us start from in our daily negotiations. You can't expect to change the behavior of someone by pointing out what's wrong. And when you do this, it unfortunately comes out sounding a little arrogant. You can't assume that your version of the truth is the only truth. This is one of the most westernized ways of thinking. If you start pitting your truth against that of your counterpart, you have just lost the negotiation 
and turned it into a great warfare situation, instead of a great collaboration. In this last step, you have to mutually come up with alternatives and solutions to the problem that are acceptable to everyone and that minimizes collateral damage. You can use this five-step hostage model of negotiation to form a foundation for your business dealings as well. In business, poor negotiation can cripple a company just as quickly as losing key customers. Always leave your ego at the door and keep your eye on the bigger picture. Below are some of the tips and tricks I've researched, which you can use to be a successful negotiator for yourself or your business. Tip number one, know about the counterparty. It's always helpful if you've done your homework and know the weaknesses of the counterparty. If possible, talk to your business associates who have dealt with this person before. As the FBI's stairway model teaches you to put yourself in their shoes, so you can arrive at a common point where both parties are happy. Tip number two, negotiate only with decision makers. You don't want to find yourself in a position where you have struck a deal, only to discover that your agreement must be approved by someone higher in the chain of command. That's like starting the whole negotiation process from scratch all over again. Tip number three, as a buyer, do not disclose your budget. If you're looking to buy a good or a service, never give out your budget or any other limitation to the seller. What the salesman does is that once he knows your budget, he will reshuffle the product specifications and other parameters in order to sell you an inferior product to fit your budget. You want the best product at the best possible price. Tip number four, watch for clues such as body movement, speech patterns, and reactions. This is really important as nonverbal communication constitutes almost 93% of any communication. Verbal speech only makes up for the remaining 7%. Be prepared to suspend or cancel negotiations if you feel that things are getting nowhere. Tip 5. Demonstrate your knowledge. Establish early in the negotiation process that you're an expert on the subject matter. This may intimidate those on the other side and put them on their heels before they have a chance to establish their own credibility. Tip number 6. Always have something to give away without hurting your negotiation position. If you're submitting a price proposal to a buyer, you can try to insert decoys and red herrings in the proposal for the other party to find. For instance, you might include spare parts in your proposal, which the buyer discovers and asks you to take out from the proposal to reduce its overall cost. Spare parts are not critical to the success of the overall project, and so you can take it out and help the buyer have a psychological victory. Tip number seven, trading one element for another. If you are, for example, a seller of a car wash service and a buyer wants you to reduce your price, one intelligent strategy for you can be to lower your price for a more relaxed work schedule. Instead of having the car cleaned every day of the week, you can offer a lower price to the buyer for having it cleaned only five times a week. Tip number eight, determine an acceptable outcome for the other party. Throughout the negotiation process, ask yourself what you can offer to satisfy the priorities of the other party without weakening your own position. Be prepared to give up the little things. You cannot win it all. Try to reach a win-win situation for all so that both parties can benefit from the deal. So in conclusion, successful negotiation is like a game of chess where every move you make should be designed to set up not only your next move, but other moves down the line. Always have an end game in mind, as that will help you avoid fighting to the last dollar. There's no point in fighting over pennies when you've already secured a good dollar deal. Remember that a great negotiation is a great collaboration, where each party comes out happy and satisfied. Your adversary is not the guy sitting across the table whom you're negotiating with. Your adversary is the situation and both sides of the table are faced with some aspect of the same situation. A great negotiation will entail a win-win situation as both parties come together to solve the problem for each other in the most acceptable manner possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment below and let us know what you think. Like, subscribe and enable notifications. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.